The Steelhead Summit Alliance was kind of founded by the Wild Steelhead Coalition. We organized one uh, after a couple years when we were first formed in 2002. And the intention was to create a venue that all of us steelhead advocates could get together, uh, organizations come together, subject matter experts come together, so we could all be better informed about uh, the issues surrounding the plight of wild steelhead. And, uh, you know, so we, we've had an opportunity to work on some really great topics over the years. Uh, this is our 10th one, like uh, Luke had, had uh, informed you. But, you know, we've had a chance to look at topics ranging from the status of wild steelhead in the state, uh, wild steelhead management gene banks, uh, which was also a catalyst for helping us start forward on trying to get the saw duck as a wild steelhead management gene bank. Uh, we've, we've had topics on hatchery reform and IHN disease. Uh, and also we uh, had topics regarding the Elwha River and starting the ideas of what that recovery might look like in the Elwha Basin. Uh, so this, uh, this, like I said, is our 10th. And, uh, and again, this is not necessarily the Wild Steelhead Coalition's uh, event. This is kind of everybody's event. Uh, it's an umbrella alliance for all organizations and individuals. And so we really, we urge other people to get involved and uh, also help us host them as well as plan them. And, uh, you know, so in the future, if you're interested, be sure to contact us and talk to us more about it. So. Uh, this year's theme, of course, is the Wild Skagit, and what I wanted to do was first kind of tell a story a little bit. Uh, again, this was my thanks for attending sign that I got a little ahead of myself, but, uh, and talking about the summit. But again, there's a lot of people that don't, I think it's really interesting, there's a lot of people that don't realize that steelhead is our, one of our Washington State symbols. And, you know, I find that pretty pretty profound because I think we should be doing a lot to protect one of our state symbols. I think that's an important thing to remember, right? So again, I want to talk and go back in time just for a minute. Uh, 1971 was a real special year for me and for a couple other reasons. Uh, 1971 was the year I caught my first wild winter steelhead on the West Fork of the Hump Tulips as a 12-year-old. Uh, I had my white spinning rod with my uncle staying in the back, back of his 57 Chevy carry-all. Snow falling, wet snow falling, I remember the day, just green water. Caught it on a pink Oki Drifter, Mitchell 300 spinning reel, and leaky hip boots, and I was the happiest kid in the world. Uh, it's in my grandmother's kitchen here, and she never seemed to mind me bringing a mess into her house. So I always appreciated that about her. Um, you know, it was interesting too in 71 because something else, I was a steelhead obsessed kid, right? And something else happened. It was a year of really big fish in the state of Washington. A half dozen 30 pound plus steelhead were taken in Washington waters in, during that time that we know of, right? Two of them came from the Skagit. I still remember the clipping, newspaper clipping of Al English holding up his 30 pound steelhead from the Skagit they caught on a plunking bar in, uh, on New Year's Day. I still remember looking at that in the newspaper. And then later on, I used to go over to my uncle's house and I'd hang out at my uncle's house because he always had the stack of fishing magazines. And there was the uh, Field and Stream article later on called The Year of Big Fish and it had every one of those fish on the cover, that, those half dozen big 30 pound plus steelhead. And two of them came from the Skagit. Um, you know, it was a year of giants. And I think what's amazing to me is, we all talk about the Skeena and Skeena being the river of giants, right, for summer steelhead. And, you know, I, you know I've been up there, I've sampled the waters, I've had great fishing. I, I caught a 30 pound steelhead on the Kispiox. Uh, it was an amazing thing, but I often go back and think about it and think about 
what we didn't realize, what we have in our own backyard, these are wild winter steelhead that are, could rival pretty much anything that's up on the Skeena River. We still have them on the Olympic Peninsula. We, I'm sure there's still some in the Skagit. It's like, when will we realize what we currently have in our own backyard? And I think that's really what really pulls me harder into steelhead conservation because I love my home waters and I want them to be around for my future as well as my kids' future and their kids. So what we do today can have a profound effect on what happens tomorrow. You know, the Skagit really is a river of legend. You know, I, I admit, I'm not a Skagit regular. Uh, my home water was the Skycomish. I'd make trips up to the Sock and fish the ska, Sock as much as I could during the CNR seasons. But I grew up fishing the Olympic Peninsula rivers, and that's where my heart was. But I miss my Skycomish season. I miss the Sock and even my occasional visits to the Skagit. So let's keep that in mind as we move forward. But today is, I just kind of want to take you through a quick journey really quick, just to kind of build a sense of place, right? So today is, a unique, opportunity, for a river and wild steelhead. Let's remember that as we move forward. Let's take this information and become better advocates for the resource. We can do this together and make a difference. Thank you.